Welcome to this edition of the SKNAS Week in Review. In this program, we recap significant activities of the government of St. Kitts and Nevis over the past week. Coming up, date changed for reduced VAT rate days. St. Kitts and Nevis achieves 80% adult vaccination rate. Stakeholders briefed on entertainment sector reopening. And St. Kitts and Nevis to host on the 19 Cricket World Cup matches. Those stories and more are next. On the SK NIS Week in Review, for the period November 26 to December 2, 2021. Hello and welcome. This month's reduced VAT rate days scheduled for December 16 and 18 has been changed to Friday, December 17 and Saturday, December 18. Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris made the announcement on Wednesday during a sitting of the National Assembly. Dr. Harris said that the changes were recommended by the St. Kitts and the Nevis Chamber of Industry and Commerce. One of the reasons that the Chamber, the reasons that the Chamber has advanced was that they were concerned that on the previous date they had proposed, the 16th, we will have a record or a large number of cruise ships docked in Bass Tier and that you will have an overflow of thousands of cruise passengers on December 16th. That, of course, will not provide for the greatest efficiency in terms of our people moving to and fro to execute business on the 16th. Accordingly, the Chamber has proposed December 17th, and on that date, we are expecting a lower cruise traffic to be experienced. Three bills were approved by the National Assembly during Wednesday's sitting. These were the Immigration Amendment Bill 2021 and the Securities Bill 2021. Both were piloted by Prime Minister and Minister of National Security Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris. The Civil Aviation Amendment No. 2 Bill 2021 was the third bill passed in the federal parliament. It was successfully piloted by Minister of Civil Aviation, the Honorable Mark Brantley. Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Lindsay Grant extended deepest gratitude to tourism stakeholders and the general public as a whole who helped St. Kitts and Nevis to achieve the 80% adult vaccination rate to protect against COVID-19. Minister Grant expressed the sentiment in an address on Monday. We are proving that without a doubt, by acting with unity of purpose, that by adopting an all of society approach to tackling this virus, we have delivered remarkable results that are redounding to our collective benefit and safety as a people. A high vaccination rate increases the pace at which we can fully reopen our society and get back to enjoying the once simple pleasures of socializing with friends and family and attending events. It also increases visitor confidence in travel, travel to destinations they deem safe. Health authorities in the Federation are closely monitoring developments regarding the new COVID-19 variant designated as Omicron. At Wednesday's briefing by the National Emergency Operations Center, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Hazel Laws stated that while there are still a lot of unknowns about the new variant, there are key areas of concern. What are the main concerns about this variant? All right, so previously identified mutations found in this Omicron variant have shown potential for increased transmissibility, potential for increased disease severity, and probably a reduction in the effectiveness of antibodies that the, 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 your body would have produced, either naturally or vaccine-induced. Early modeling suggests that Omicron may be as much as 100 to 500% more transmissible than the original strain. But again, uh, this scientific information has to be confirmed or is yet to be confirmed. However, in South Africa and those Southern African uh, countries and further afield, 
there are reports, anecdotal reports coming out uh, of reinfections and breakthrough infections of uh, vaccinated individuals. But one thing we know for sure is that there is a very high risk of this variant being imported uh, to the Caribbean. In light of the Omicron variant and the high risk of importation, several COVID-19 protective measures that were scheduled to be eased are being extended. One such measure was the land and go arrangement for fully vaccinated incoming travelers. This measure allowed for arriving passengers to avoid quarantine measures provided that they, of course, had a negative RT-PCR test result prior to arrival and can clear port health and safety surveillance protocols. Abdiya Samuel is the chairman of the National COVID-19 Task Force. Based on the risk associated with the variant Omicron, uh, the cabinet was advised and accepted the recommendation that was brought from the HEOC to the task force, National COVID-19 Task Force, endorsed by the task force, taken to the cabinet uh, yesterday, and this was accepted for us to delay the implementation of the process. The process has not been made obsolete, it's just a delay uh, so that we can give our health authorities, our science uh, experts, the opportunity to get further information on the Omicron so then we can proceed and make an implementation. Entertainers and event organizers were briefed on plans for the reopening of the entertainment sector during a briefing session on Friday, November 26. The attendees were able to pose pertinent questions to the officials in attendance, which included Minister of Entertainment, the Honorable Akila Byron Nisbet, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Hazel Laws, Acting Fire Chief Garfield Hodge, and Superintendent of Police Cromwell Henry. Information shared included the application process to host events, venue capacity, adherence, and enforcement of the COVID-19 protocols. The new procedures will be conveniently placed into an informational package that will be available for distribution. One of the major changes involves a new process for persons who intend to hold mass events, as outlined by Minister Byron Nisbet. One of the things that we are requesting or requiring is that notification of intent to host a mass event or any event that is would be through the Permanent Secretary's Office at the Ministry of Entrepreneurship, Communications on Entertainment and Talent Development. This is simply so that when you come into us, what the Ministry will do, is we will assign you an event liaison officer. This event liaison officer, even though you have the packet, will go through all of the documents that would be required for approval make sure everything is in order so that your approval process would be seamless. In a way, what we are trying to do is create an ease of doing business for the entertainment industry. December 1 is commemorated by many international countries as World AIDS Day. Here in St. Kitts and Nevis, Minister of Health, the Honorable Akila Byron Nisbet, marked the occasion with a national address. She highlighted a theme for this year's celebration, which is, quote, end inequalities, end AIDS, end pandemics, end quote, as listed on the UN AIDS website. The minister encouraged all to participate in local activities. These include community awareness sessions within the schools and churches, media information sessions espousing the dangers of unsafe sexual practices, the need to get tested for HIV, and the importance of accessing life-saving treatment immediately following a positive diagnosis, as well as condom drives throughout the island, and on December 1st, World AIDS Day, screening and rapid HIV testing at the Independent Square. It is also dubbed we are ready, so we wear something red. The Ministry of Health encourages everyone to participate in the various national HIV awareness events and to utilize all testing opportunities available. 
The syndicate's nearest Angola National Bank has recorded a historic profit for the financial year ending June 30, 2021. The Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris, shared the news with the nation during Parliament on Wednesday. The bank would have declared one of the largest profits in its history, that is for the financial year ending the 30th of June 2021. And in that record, and in that record, it is proposed that they will make a historic dividend payout to shareholders of about 20 um, cents per share. Such a significant development, Mr. Speaker, will assist the 5,642 shareholders in having a more enjoyable Christmas and it will provide them some cash in advance of the popular reduced bad rate days. And finally, we have some good news for cricket lovers. St. Kitts and Nevis is one of four venues selected to host matches for the 14th edition of the International Cricket Council on the 19th Men Cricket World Cup 2022. The country will host practice matches and group matches from January 3 to 23, 2022. St. Kitts and Nevis's Minister of Sports, the Honorable John L. Powell, noted that the local matches will be spread throughout the country, utilizing the cricket grounds in Bastyr, Connery, Kayon, Molyneux, and St. Paul's. I urge our own young people to take advantage of the opportunity to see what is happening here in St. Kitts, but at the same time on a global stage, to appreciate the paradise that we have within that the rest of the world seems to already recognize. I can say that there will be many opportunities for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis to participate um, financially and economically. You would have seen the, the uh, tremendous success economically brought about by the CPL games which were hosted in August and September and we anticipate the same type of activity, the same type of economic, e economic impact uh, through contracts awarded to locals. That's all for this edition of the SKNAS Week in Review. For more information on these and other stories, visit us at sknis.gov.kn. I'm Ian Richards.